So now that we have the ProSelect Platinum, we're going to go through quickly how to put this together. So it comes standard with these bottles that are on here. And I'm just going to go through one by one and explain how we're going to use these. So it comes just like this. We want to take everything out of the box, as you see here. And then we're going to go through how to use these. So for the sake of this demonstration, I am going to use some bottled water. But in your office, you're going to use distilled water, or you're going to use chlorhexidine or fluoride, whichever you want. But you cannot use tap water in this when we set this up or when we use this on a routine basis. So we just unscrew the cap just like this. And it's just going to tighten in place so that you can tell it's tight. There are two flat sides here. And that's how this is going to go into the scaler. It goes in nice and straight. And we're just going to quarter turn it until it's tight. And the same thing with the third bottle. Second bottle and third bottle. Now we have our adapter cord, which looks just like this. We're going to take our adapter cord and plug it into the wall. And then in the back here, which I will be able to show you in the back here, you'll see that it plugs into the gray, goes with the gray, and then the black will go with the black for the foot pedal. So the gray goes in here, and you can tell that you now have electricity going to it. The foot pedal, as I've also unpacked here, will uncoil the wire, and the Rio set stat will sit down here. So when we're talking about plus and minus, certainly on the foot pedal you can see that there's a minus here, and there's a plus here. It says irrigator and bottle. We'll get to that a little bit later on as far as how we do this and what we, how we use those functions. And in the back, as I showed you, this is going to plug into the back. The, the black goes into the black area here. So we're now ready and operating for this. You have the handpiece cable, which looks with two mirrored ends just like this. You have additional cables that came with it that are also included in here. This is just should you need these for future reference. I would uncoil them and I would hang them somewhere in your supply closet just so that it doesn't, that memory of the, of the coil doesn't get embedded into the cable, similar to uh, digital x-rays, things like that. But these are two mirrored ends so that the way that they go into the handpiece and into the cable themselves are exactly the same. So there's no right or wrong way to put this in, but we are just going to push. We don't turn at all, we just push it. You then have two hand pieces that you'll have that are different. One is the scalar hand piece, which has threads at the top. The other one is the irrigating hand piece. And the way that you know is that tip is smooth. So you can't actually put a, a tip on there or screw a tighten a tip down on there. That's the way you know that that one is the irrigator. So we're just going to tighten that into place and leave that here for a second. We're going to look at the scaling hand piece. You have three tips that came into a box that looks like this. When we open that box, we will finger tighten these down like so. And then in here you also have uh, a grip holder for the handpiece, which looks like a tooth, surprisingly enough. So it looks like a tooth and it gives you some information just about our product and our 1-800 number on there. There is a wrench. And there's also a little metal piece in here that is a metal square that looks like this. And that metal square we're going to talk about in a second as well. So we now have our handpiece. We now have our tip tightened securely on our scaling handpiece. We will then attach the light. So there's a metal piece that fits into a little groove that's around the tip here. And then the bottom is just a cuff, and that cuff will just snap into place like that. Then we take the handpiece cable, and we're going to push them together. Just push, not turn, but it gets pushly, pushed nicely together like that. So we're then going to be ready to use our scaler. In order for us to turn it on, there's two different ways that we can do that. We can, one, do it with the foot pedal just by pressing the middle part, which turns the unit on. There's also another way that you can turn the power on by the power button here, which also controls the on-off. It will give you a reading, your digital reading here, which gives you the power level is three, the flow is low, bottle number one we are on, we are in scalar mode. As we move from scalar to irrigator, it will then flash on and off that it's now in irrigating mode. If any reason, for any reason, this gets set into irrigating mode and it, you're trying to scale with it, it will not scale. It will just have water shoot out of the end. So one of the troubleshooting things that we tell you is just to make sure it's not flashing and that it is in scalar mode. 
It also has an adjustable flow rate, digital adjustable flow rate, which if you just push it, you can then arrow up or arrow down to increase or decrease the water flow. You can move the bottles on the front simply by pushing bottle, and it will move it from side to side back to number one. You can turn the light on or off. This tells you that the light is on for your visualization, or you can turn it off if you so desire to. So on the foot pedal, we talked a little bit about these pieces, these different ones. When you hit these together, and I'm gonna show you with my hand, when you hit those together, you can then make it go from scalar to irrigator. If you hit it back again, it puts it back in scalar mode. If you hit these together on this side, it will move the bottle. So it will move the bottle from side to side. And just the middle part of it here is what activates it. So for a second, we'll shut that off. So now we've put the light on and our handpiece and everything is ready to go. I'm just gonna take this off. So I finger tightened this down just a second ago just so that it was tight, but I can still loosen it with just my hands. That's where the wrench comes into play. We're going to slip it over to the, over the top of the handpiece and we're gonna give it one quarter turn like that just to tighten it down so that now it's ready to go. This wrench can also be used as a gauge, which there's a little teeny tiny hole that's in it, which it shows you the level of the tip. And you wanna see some level of your tip always coming through the other side of the wrench. If you can't see the tip, the tip is worn and it's less effective and it needs to be replaced. So there's also a gauge on that as well. So now we are going to put the light back on and we're going to connect it so that we're now ready to go. Make sure that it is in scalar mode. And it is, we have a nice light mist. It's ready to go. We are now going to be able to do a little bit of training on this to make sure that your stroke is correct and it's exactly what we need for our patient. Optimal comfort and also so that it's effective for you as a hygienist to understand the difference between this and a cavitron. So I spoke of this little metal piece before, and I want to start here. This metal piece will help you to adapt your tactile pressure or your lateral pressure to the patient to give optimum performance for this. So using this light, or this light, a light lateral stroke, which is about three to five grams, which is not very heavy. It's about the amount of grams that we would use to do a probing for our patients. So a nice light lateral pressure. So we'll start just by showing you here that when we are using this for our patients, we want a nice light lateral pressure, just enough to really remove. And just to show you the difference too between linear and elliptical stroke. So between going from the linear, which is I don't miss anything and it never misses the tooth, and also you can't feel this, but that's how we're also going to be able to get our tactile or our lateral pressure down for this unit. Very important that you remember for optimal comfort for you and the patient, light lateral pressure and a light lateral movement to keep the tip activated. Use this to practice on before you actually go into the patient's mouth. If you're switching from magnetostrictive to piezoelectric, we wanna make sure that our tactile sensitivity is very important, so, and our lateral pressure. So a light lateral pressure, and I'll just turn the light off there for a second, just to show you the difference on that and then show you. So it's nice lateral, light lateral pressure. We don't wanna gouge this piece of metal. All we wanna do is be able to take off the layer of it. So you wanna get that down. So now, just to show you the difference, I wanna be able to show you when we're demonstrating this to an office, we wanna make sure that we have our fulcrum finger resting on the tooth, just like they would, so that it looks like we are, know what we're doing and as far as what a dental hygienist does. So we wanna be able to, with a light lateral stroke, very, very light, and the lighter the better. And you can see that that calculus is coming off for this for our patients, and it doesn't miss anything. So we're just gonna go back and forth, light lateral strokes, light lateral pressure for this, and be able to, to use that technique on our patients as well. So a light lateral pressure. So when we're using this with our patients, we wanna make sure that certainly our body core is nice and straight, and, and obviously I achieve this ergonomic position by wearing my perioptic loops. That helps me to keep the right distance away from my patient, but then also so that I may work a, a lot easier and a lot less fatiguing for me. I know that when I incorporated loops, there was nothing I missed before, but certainly when you put on some uh, amplified visualization, it's amazing what you can see. And also I, I sat a lot straighter, and I went to the chiropractor a lot less, so my neck didn't have the stiffness and my back didn't. So being able to <clears throat> use this on our patient, to make certain that we are a light lateral pressure 
and being able to remove this calculus from this tooth here. As you'll see here, it's nice. There's not a lot of water. I'm getting a nice clean on here just to show you on here is I'm getting a nice clean, a nice light lateral pressure for my patients here. And you can see that that's just emulsifying that calculus right off the tooth. It's very comfortable for you and it's comfortable for your patient as well. You will have these types of typodonts that are in your rep uh, scalar kits as well. And they only have two teeth and they're in some plaster and there's white out simply placed on there for, for the use of a demonstration. So using that nice lateral technique, having my fulcrum finger right on the tooth. So you want to have a nice light lateral pressure. Let me use this type it on. And as you can see, they remove that quite nicely. Light lateral pressure. Just keep remembering it's a light lateral pressure to clean that tooth surface. So we want to make sure that our fulcrum finger is on here when we're practicing and being able to remove this for our patients. And because of the titanium tip, you'll notice that there's a lot less water than you'll typically see with a Cavitron. So you're not constantly following behind yourself, trying to make sure you suction out the patient's mouth. If there are any other issues that you have with the scaler or any other tips, techniques that you'd like to find out more from, certainly call us um, anytime or reach out to your inside sales representative or your outside sales representative. So now we want to talk about the irrigator. Now this is for billable subgingival irrigation. We want to switch this to irrigator mode simply by placing that um, in irrigator mode. Now it, during this time it will take about 45 seconds approximately for this to heat up so that it's a nice warm soothing solution for your patients. It also will initiate healing. We would put this on chlorhexidine to do our subgingival uh, irrigation. You can certainly use fluoride, uh, sodium fluoride if you'd like instead. Just make sure that you suction. You remind the patient, please don't swallow while we're doing this procedure. I am going to flush some medication under your gums so that you can, um, we can initiate healing and it's soothing to your tissues as well. But as the hygienist, you're going to feel that the handpiece is starting to warm up. Like I said, it takes about 45 seconds to warm up. Usually I'm talking to my patient about what I'm about to do is with uh, subgingival irrigation. You heard that one long beep, which tells you that it's now at optimum temperature and it's ready to irrigate. So what I would do is I would simply put it into the sulcus and I would irrigate around these areas here using chlorhexidine or fluoride and just irrigate out that sulcus so that we get a nice clean pocket for healing. We can initiate the healing and also suctioning behind ourselves while we do it. A nice uh, add-on that you can use this for as well is doing your fluoride treatments, just telling the patient make sure you don't swallow. You can also use warm fluoride to do your fluoride treatments. And that's a nice added benefit for you and your, and your patients and for your practice as well.